frontier land. Tall tales and true from the legendary past. Tomorrowland, promise of things to come. Adventureland, the wonder world of nature's own realm. Fantasyland, the happiest kingdom of them all. Presenting this week... At Disneyland Park, the realm devoted to things of the future is called Tomorrowland. One of the popular attractions here is our simulated rocket trip around the moon. After entering the Disneyland spaceport, visitors may experience the thrills that space travelers of the future will encounter when rocket trips to the moon become a daily routine. However, scientists tell us that it will be many years before space travel becomes a reality. After consulting with the scientists, our artists and studio technicians have prepared a factual picture of how the coming conquest of the moon will be accomplished. Here to tell you about it is director Ward Kimball. When we hear the exciting news of how the rocket scientists of today are preparing for tomorrow's trip to the moon, we must remember that such a trip has long been the dream of many men since history began. But before we consider the scientific plans for a trip to the moon, let us first show you, as sort of a prologue, the results of our research into the legends and facts and foibled superstitions of man in the moon. Roll the moon sequence, please. This is the moon. It shines over the great cities. It illuminates the countryside, and its reflection shimmers on lakes and oceans. This is the moon that saw life begin on Earth millions of years ago. As primeval man watched the moon in the night sky, it became to him an object of curiosity. In legend, he tells the story of an old man who, while digging, discovered a small shiny object. As he held it in his hands, it grew and grew, and finally escaped into the sky to become the moon. To primitive man, the moon was somewhat of a personality. Sometimes he saw in it the face of another man or a woman. Some ancient aborigines thought they saw a four-eyed leopard. Perhaps the greatest mystery to our ancestors was the moon's strange ability to change its shape. The early Hindus believed that it was Chandrashka, the god of night, slowly turning his lamp as he moved across the sky. The Aegeans, on the other hand, thought the moon was a silver shield reflecting the seas and mountains of the earth. Moon worship was an important part of many ancient religions. The Sumerians called the moon Nana, and the golden calf with crescent horns was a symbol of reverence. Here stands the Egyptian moon god Thoth, the reckoner of time. Twelve times between the annual rise of the Nile, the moon grew to fullness. This gave Egypt one of the first lunar year calendars. And here is Diana, the Grecian moon goddess, whose beauty inspired the Romans to build a silver temple in her honor. To some primitive races, an eclipse was a mysterious and terrible thing to behold. They believed a giant serpent was devouring the sun's light, so they danced and made great noises to frighten the moon beast away. And he would go away. The first book devoted completely to the moon was a parchment by Plutarch. He said the moon was simply a smaller Earth. But unlike the Earth, its inhabitants were demons. These words of Plutarch inspired one Lucian of Samosata to record what was perhaps the first science fiction story. He tells of a very strange journey to the moon in 160 AD. The ship went sailing on western seas through the pillars of Hercules. She sailed through a realm as dark as night, pursuing her course of lunar flight. The moon king held his hand aloft and cried to far and near, 
Be gone, ye earthling creatures bold. There are no women here. There followed upon the face of the earth a period called the Dark Ages. For centuries, the light of knowledge was extinguished, and only a fleeting mention of the moon was made. Moon. Then there was the great event of 1609. Galileo Galilei built a telescope and made the first close-up observations of the moon. He excitedly announced that he had observed the moon as another world, complete with mountains and seas. When the astronomer-mathematician Johannes Kepler heard of Galileo's startling observations, he immediately set to work on a book about the moon called Somnium, or Sleep. In this very imaginative account, Kepler goes to sleep during an eclipse and is kidnapped by moon demons. Because they cannot bear the light of the sun, they migrate to and from the earth, using the moon's shadow for a bridge. Here on the moon, Kepler wakes to see a fur-covered moon creature emerging during the cool of the evening. Kepler's experience inspired the English bishop, Francis Godwin, to write a book called The Man in the Moon. His hero is a Spanish gentleman exiled on St. Helena, who escapes by building a contraption that harnesses the efforts of large swan-like birds. He realizes too late that these birds are of a rare type that migrate all the way to the moon. However, the trip is interesting, and he finds that the moon's inhabitants vary in size, according to their rank. Their only language is music. A few years later, the flamboyant Cyrano de Bergerac makes comments on the possibility of traveling to the moon. His close friends scoff at the idea. This drives Cyrano to prove his point by writing a unique science fiction moon trip. His own personal device for getting to the moon is a string of bottles containing dew. Anyone knows that as the sun rises, so does the morning dew, and so does Cyrano. His scheme works so well that he has to discard some of the dew bottles for fear of overshooting his mark. But alas, he drops one too many, misses the moon, and lands in Canada. The natives are very hostile. He has to escape. What to do? Build a rocket, of course. This time, he is more successful. When his fuel supply gives out, the moon's gravity helps him make a triumphant lunar landing. In 1835, a sensational news report appeared in the New York Sun. Sir John Herschel, noted astronomer, had discovered life on the moon. The account stated that Sir John, aided by a powerful new telescope, was able to study the moon from a distance of 50 feet. He observed fantastic rock formations, strange plants, and hairy man-like creatures with bat wings who walked about in a dignified manner. There were animals too, grazing bison and one-horned unigoats who were very playful. However, this whole story was the imaginative product of an overzealous reporter. It was a complete hoax, a moon hoax. Here we see the leading characters in Jules Verne's Victorian trip around the moon. Three adventurers are given a fraternal send-off by the brothers of the Baltimore Gun Club. After a very hazardous trip, the daring spacemen are given a hearty reception by the brothers of the Baltimore Gun Club. Frequent reference to the moon is made in great literature. Shakespearean societies have long delighted in such lunar lyrics as Romeo. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, Juliet. Oh, swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon, that monthly changes in her circled orb. Othello, it is the very error of the moon. She comes more nearer Earth 
than she was wont and makes men mad. <laughs> The moon is the source of many odd beliefs and superstitions. One of the oldest sayings is that the moon is made of green cheese. Or that it is the resting place for all articles lost on earth. It is said, if a man sees a new moon through a window, misfortune will befall him. Or, if he cuts his hair under a new moon, it will grow back too fast. Ow, 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 ow. A secret wish made to a new moon will come true. But it is unlucky to see the new moon over the right shoulder. A new moon is the time to begin things. This is a good time to get married. To build a house and move into it. Caesar once said that the dark of the moon is the best time to start a battle. When the moon is on the wane, stuff your feather bed. Wash your linen, mow your grass, cut your timber. Some farmers believe that the moon governs the planting of crops. They say that root-type crops should be planted during the dark of the moon, while the light of the full moon is the best time to plant the crops that grow above the ground. Also, medicines and tonics are said to be more efficient if taken during the full moon. In autumn, the full moon is the harvest moon. If the moon is a silver shield, be not afraid to reap your field. But if she rises haloed round, soon we'll tread on deluged ground. Pale moon doth rain, red moon doth blow. White moon doth neither rain nor snow. It has been said that money exposed to the dark of the moon will increase as the moon becomes full. Some even believe that the left hind foot of a rabbit procured in a graveyard during the dark of the moon will bring good luck. We are warned that sleeping in the lunar light will produce lunacy. From this supposition evolved such expressions as loony, lunatic, moon sick, moon mad, and moon struck. <laughs> Little children love nursery rhymes particularly verses about the moon. The man in the moon came down too soon and asked his way to Moorage. He went to the south and burned his mouth to suffering home peach porridge. Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat in the field. The little dog laughed to see the spark. And the bee ran away with the spoon. I see the moon, and the moon sees me. God bless the moon, and God bless me. The moon is the symbol of love and romance. It has long been the inspiration for love songs.